Okay, my friends, Roger once again cutting right to the chase. That is a black hole in space. The Russians made this back, I think it was 2012 or something. Now, during the experiments, when they f flushed all this plasma into a vacuum bucket in space, I'm going to go through in extreme detail. However, I'm, right now I'm just going to show you this is what occurred when they put all these plasma particles. They floated all over and then they blip, 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 turned into this black hole. Now, they contact, these are the Russians in space, they're do, doing this experiment. And like I said, it goes back quite a ways. They contacted the people at, at um, Max Planck and the guy went insane, locked himself in his office for three weeks, couldn't figure out what was going on. Now, I understand what's going on here and I'm going to explain it to you and if you don't understand it if you don't agree I'd love to understand why and what you think all right so here goes they put all these particles in these these are what they call plasma and they glow and you can see the actual particles they're tiny 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 dust particles with an extra electron basically now watch this they, because they're charged particles that's why you see them boom 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 you see it settling they said during the experiment we contacted the guys, they couldn't believe it. Now this is down on Max Planck. They said, wow, what is this? Here's what they had expected. To create a crystal lattice here. Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. All of, like a regular crystal lattice. That's what they expected. Now, then this shows up. One of the scientists from Max Planck locked himself in his office for three weeks. <laughs> Couldn't figure out what to do. Okay, my friends, I go way, way, way back on this. This is my paper that I finally made my statements. There is no such thing as giant protons and neutrons. Everything's made of electrons. Everything is a dipole, and electrons are dipoles. And I will show this in extremely good detail. Originally they say this was a proton. One big gigantic proton. This is a helium, I mean a hydrogen proton. One proton. All right. Well guess what? I say it's 1837 electrons. So they say, I, mean, I could do all the math for you and we'll do it. Very, it's, it's so simple it's unbelievable. But instead of being one big chunk like this, it's 1837 little magnets. They're little tiny bar magnets. And I want to tell you something. Do not get these around kids or animals. They eat these little magnets and it can kill them. It can kill them. Do not get these around kids or animals. All right, now, I'm just warning. I've heard, I heard news that they can kill them by perforating their intestines. I'm not sure how, whether they wrap around and snap back together and they pull or I don't know what's going on there but they can kill the kids. Now this is not a muon and an electron neutrino two separate things. They are literally a light particle and here is what a light particle looks like and I'm going to show it to you because I have it right here as a matter of fact let's see it right now. These are what light particles are. They're black and white balls together and when they smash they create exactly what CERN wants to see. The black ball goes on its way just like this and a white one detaches and explodes into electron showers precisely as you see below. And I'll show you that actually occurring. Right here they're attached together like this only in a four box. Boom! They split. And the only reason they split is because we engineered a little tiny venturi here that accelerated the light and they and when it accelerated only the white could crush down enough to get through and create the dark uh, I mean the uh, electron showers the black ones can't get away they bounce back out of there they, they don't emit they don't absorb they don't reflect they're dark matter they come back and attach they're nothing but gravity no, this is not my first day on a job. This goes back 50 years ago. I said, and this is what got me in trouble, the, tra the transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor. Atomic vapor. That's what it is right there. Light, when it hits things, it turns into atomic vapor. Atoms. Well, electrons, really. And the electrons flood through everything. 
And that's what causes heat. It causes expansion. It causes plants to grow. They're literally little magnetic particles. And, and uh, there they are, right there. This is the, where they separate here, as I showed you before, and this is where they reattach. That's fusion, I mean fission, where it separates, and that's fusion where they come back together. The black separated from the white. And here's what they look like when they're not. When you look at them one at a time, this is what they are. The black and white ball. I showed you that before. A black and white ball. That's nothing but dark matter. And that is the concussive, explosive white portion, which we always call an electron. So this is, they call this an electron neutrino, and that's an electron neutrino. Well, this is the muon portion, and this is the electron portion of that neutrino. This is what happens when they concuss, and the forward-leading one bangs into those little particles right there, you see them? That's why they get glowy. It's pushed and shoved. The black ones don't do anything. The black ones just stay black. <laughs> they just go right through and everything's fine with them. All they want to do is hug up to the white ones. Now, this one trails, so it's, it's, it's compressed. We had to create the venturi, which allowed the compressed particles to come through, but not the bigger black ones. The bigger ones, they just can't get through there. As far, that's just what I've determined. That they just they're just too big in this exact specific venturi that Rod Warren created it's just by accident. It wasn't anything he went out to set out. Oh, I'm going to make light accelerate now, and he didn't know he did it until I saw it. And I said, "Holy smokes, Rod! I can't believe what you did." And then we went through it. Because look at this. This is all they want to see is that muon, the black ball, and they want to see electron showers. That is fission. That, they came apart. We saw them together. I showed them to you there together. Uh, well, let's look at them one more time to show how they actually come. And when they splatter right here, they divide. There is no question in my mind, and there is no question in my mind they came back together. The black balls look exactly the same as they did to me when they started as to when they're back. When they, they can lay on top of each other. They don't care about that. These ones here, get away, get away, get away. The white ones are the pushers and shovers. The black ones say, come on, come on back to me. Let's, ah, let's all get together. All right, hold on a second. All right, this is the most interesting shot right here. You see up here, you don't see any big splashes of red and black, I mean the black and white and so forth. But right here, you see, you're starting to get this little backup looking thing. And then all of a sudden, you see it turn into a box of particles, the black and white back to back photons what I'm saying well it's light so it's photons now here it explodes because right there is a venture and all the venturi is is a, a device that forces the particles to crush together and at this point it's so tight in here only the white ones can split through here you see them? the white ones can get and the black ones bounce off and they go around they get out of the way because they can't get through all right, this basically explains the best I can. Is this was a pulsed red laser, bip, 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 just a regular construction laser, nothing special at all. He was just doing experiments, playing around, and and he came up with these pictures. He sent them to me. I said, "Holy smokes!" This black ball, which was part of the white assembly, the four box there, the little particle like little looking thing that was like this when it started, has split apart. Now, all he did was put two round, literally finishing nails. I'm sure he had them just as close as he could get them together. I'm going with angstrom units in here, which is like tiny, tiny. How? Because my feeling is that black ball should not be big enough to, should be too big to get through there. You know, I show it a little out of proportion here just to make sure you understand there's a, a slit there. But it should be very tiny. And somebody's going to have to experiment. Uh, this, 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 how close, how far away, how many pulses, how fast, what color laser, all, all the whole nine yards. But what's happening here is, in my estimation, and I can't see any other, somebody can explain it to me, maybe they can, but I can see the black ones have separated from the white, and they come back together here. And I saw that exactly as what CERN asked for. Now, what is happening as the particles, the particles are spinning this way. They're not flapping like this, little bits and nothing waves. They really don't know what light is. That's the problem. Light spins as a particle. Some spin off this side, and they go that way. Some spin over this way, and they go that way. But they don't want to be next to each other, so they create these interference patterns. Let me show you. 
Okay, this is light spinning. Now, it's crashing over here and coming through the slit here. And some of it spins off this way, and then as it comes around the bottom, some go off this way. You can see them. And it, you can see that there's actually a drill bit screwing through here. So, this shows to me that light is a spinning particle, and I have seen it, as you did, there was black and white balls together, and it, when you see them starting to concuss, that's when they manifest themselves as the black and white balls. Now, as far as I can determine, photons are photons. There's a black and white balls, black and white balls. This is green, the other ones are red. Blue, we really can't see all that well, but they're certainly particles, and they are certainly spin. Alright, you saw the red and the green. Now, this is blue. And it's either going faster here and slowing down up here, or it's going faster here and slowing down up here, down here. Now, let's look at what we can determine from looking at it. To my mind, this is glowier and this is brighter down here. There's more interaction. That means there's more concussion. Up here, there's less glowiness, and you can actually see the particles start to become those two little white balls. You know, we saw black balls before. I don't know, maybe these are them. I don't know where they are. To be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> All I can tell you is that thing is spinning to the right, which means it would be drifting to the left. I have to say it's coming this direction. If it's spinning to the right, even though we see it going this way, that means it's, it's drifting to the left, spinning to the right. So I say the light is coming in here, and wham, it hits and starts to slow down, and this is it in a slowing down phase until it hits what normally I suppose would be the speed of blue light. And I don't know if blue light's faster than green or red, I have no clue. All I can tell you is I can see the particles, I can see it separating into black and white balls, so, so I'm saying we've got dark matter and we've got explosive, pushy white matter.